The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, folks. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour. My pleasure to be here Monday through Friday, noon till 1 p.m. Yesterday, everything was set. And then just before I was going to do the show, um, an appointment I had for later on, someone uh, was changed. I just had no choice. I could, there's nothing I could do. I just couldn't do the show. What a shame. But I would have otherwise have done it at 8 o'clock had I known. That would have been interesting, doing the show at 8 o'clock when the market was, and all of a sudden at noon, it was actually about 15 minutes before. Some of us have heard the news because the market started to go to a plus 120, then it was moving up. And then during my show, it just went plus 180 to 280 to 350, and then, stored, then it had a whole new phase to the upside later on the day. Spectacular day. Now, let's go through a bunch of things. Within the context of what moved yesterday, I thought that was really important because it gave us a sense for my webinar coming up on Tuesday night, a webinar just for subscribers, but you can be a subscriber, go to the front page, TFNN, check it out. Um, I've got my webinar coming up. Basically, what's next? How is this going to resolve? What are key support levels in the different indices we'll go through? What are key resistance levels? If the resistance levels are taken out sooner rather than later, what does it mean if the support levels? After all, don't think that after all this chaos that's been going on in the world, um, everything's going to be resolved on Sunday night. Some things might be, some hints might be. My thinking here is that um, there's a good chance that China... Uh, and the United States will say they've come to some kind of an agreement, and then Monday and Tuesday, as we dig into the agreement, we'll find that, yeah, it's an agreement, but it's contingent upon other things, and the real big issue, and that's the big issue of tariffs, um, has to be resolved over a period of time. That's all. So what's changed? Here's what I'm looking at. And let me just run the numbers. Dow's down 103 at 25,263. Runs from 24,268 to yesterday's high of 25, uh, 20, uh, yep, 25,000. I should have wrote it so many times. I think it was 20, 25,003 something. 25,368. And now we're at uh, just 100 points lower. No big deal, especially after yesterday's move. And I said to subscribers, to my opening call, we want to see whether or not the Dow gives back normal under normal conditions, we should have a give back today of at least the last hour's rally, which is like 120 points, and we've kind of done that up to now. Now starts the rest of the day into Friday, and that's going to be important. Let's just, let's just go on with what we're looking at here. So 103, um, the key support levels, just shorter term, uh, 25,180. Don't, don't take out 25,180 because that will be uh, – Pretty big negative and say that probably have to test 25,000 again by by Friday. But if there's a nice close, there's a close today. A little sip of water. There is a close today somewhere close to the high. And what I said to subscribers to my opening call, if by 1.30 the Dow is down minus, about minus 20 or more, that's not a good sign. Much more than that is really not a good sign. It's going to be difficult to catch up by the end of the day. But if by 1.30 we've come back to maybe just a minus 15 or even have gone plus for a moment, that's going to be very important. My suspicion is, now, yeah, we come to the nitty degrees. I guess I'm going to just go through this because it's in front of me. You see this pattern that I drew up here? It was the lowercase h pattern. Now it's the lowercase h that goes to a lowercase m. In other words, two arches. And what I'd say to subscribers is that there's a chance. Oh, let me show this. Yeah, let, let, me, let me show this. There's a, there's a chance that we have another rally. And that we saw yesterday was like the midterm Wednesday after the Tuesday result. That followed up with an extra move to the high side. 
before we came plunging down from 26,277 20, 26, to the 24,260. Uh, uh, so um, I'm thinking that there's a chance that we make another H pattern. That's kind of what you'd expect. Now, I'm going to show you something very important to me anyway. So I'm going to go to the E-mini. This is the, still the December E-mini. And that's trading right now just down 675, down 0.25% at 2735. You see, here we go. I'll have to do this in two stages. First stage is I'm going to show you the 120 minute chart right here. And you see this big, deep cup formation that went to the left side highs around about 2740. And then yesterday it went to, all the way, came, comes back full circle, makes this beautiful deep cup formation. Uh, 2745 round number high, peak E. Then I drew this in for subscriber, drew this thick gray line for the for the cup formation, the U formation. And then I said there's another little rectangle forming here that could be a sideways trading band, and I drew this in. So far, we're stuck in that. I also said to subscribers, uh, to people in the den this morning, here's a really good example of a rectangle formation. Where was it? Oh, rectangle formation in the 10-minute chart. Um, have a look at this. This is really interesting. Uh, my question was, how long can rectangle formations last? And my answer is always a lot longer than your patience. Look at this. From the high yesterday in the E-mini at 2745, made it 4 o'clock, kind of a retest of that exact number. And look at this trading band between that and round about the 27, 28 level, it was just stuck the entire night, the whole night, all the way through, even this morning with a big pop up and pop down. And even earlier on, it only went just a tad low. It went to 27, uh, 23, 25. And now it's back right into that rectangle formation. Is that not powerful? Um, okay, so then you've got a V-shaped formation, peaky, pulling back, just give you parameters. Above 27.42 in the E-mini, it's trading at 27.35, so seven and a half, eight points higher. That would be very good action. Uh, and below 27.28 says, uh, uh, stuck in the range, and that's where we're going to be. So let me continue. So you see this rectangle in the E-mini chart? See that rectangle right there? That's the low of a right there. So what we've got is the low of February the week of February the 2nd at 27.66.75. And then you've got that high, one, two, three, about four weeks later, five weeks later, you make a rally and you go to the 28.15 round number high. Pull back very sharply, make an arch formation. The Dow in April went to a new low, the a new uh, yearly, yearly low. And then what happened is, the S&P, the, none, none of the others did, and neither did the E-mini. It stops at the 27, let me just tell you what it stopped at, stops at 27, sorry, 25.62, and then rallies all the way to 29.47, round number all-time high on the week of the 21st of September, and then it comes down, makes a little double top over three weeks, and then comes down, and look, it's formed exactly the same thing. I don't see why patterns shouldn't repeat as they always do, the MACD is still very weak in the weekly chart. The CASD is still very weak. I suspect that we make very much the same pattern as that rectangle right here. That's the chapter tiger conditions are. Our Dow's down 100, S&P's down 10. We'll be right back. Thank you for your calls and a lot of questions. The TAS Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The TAS Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of TAS Market Profile, the TAS Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, so we're looking at this rectangle, right? And this rectangle on the on the right says that the pattern so far is matched. The MACD is just as weak. The stochastic uh, was starting to form a little bit of a base before. And yeah, it's kind of starting a base, but it really is one of those false starts. So a lot has to happen. And I don't want just a, a news reflection to say, oh man, uh, what a great move. Now we've started a major... There were just so many people Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday talking about a new a new bull move, just a major move. It made me a little nervous about that. All I'm looking for, all I was looking for when we got into that position Monday morning, first thing, and then we got stopped out of it with a little bit of a gain and a couple of positions. One is actually held very well, done very nicely. We got stopped out of the others. We kind of back in on the Dow. But it was, it was unfortunate, and that was one of the reasons why it was a little difficult because with the Fed coming out, I just wasn't sure exactly what the response would be. I must tell you, I was a little surprised by Powell's sudden acquiescence to um, his boss's uh, commands. Um, I don't think that's the reality, and I'm going to explain that right now. Um, so I'm looking at this and I'm saying so far there's a pretty good match with what we had before. Let's see what happens Monday to Tuesday. If on Monday or Tuesday... So let's get out of this. The e mini. If the e mini is trading now at 27.36, if it's trading uh, up huge and it's over 28.18, that's going to be really uh, um, very important. So I'm going to do a couple of things because I'm just about to go to the S&P. Before I get to the S&P, I'm going to invite Ben from Tallahassee and we'll do it together. Ben, can we together look at the spy? Hi, Ben. How are you? Hey, sounds good, Basil. <clears throat> so. I'm looking at the SPY, and I'm saying, hey, it looks like it's 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 rubbing up against the 9 EMA uh, ceiling on both the monthly and the weekly. Isn't this a pretty good time to, to implement a short? And um, so I guess my question is, are you looking at the same thing, but maybe on a um, on a sh much shorter time frame, like a two-hour, that you'd see a new – a new, uh, you know, to a potential leg D or so, or higher, and then short, or what are your thoughts? So, Ben, this is what I'm going to, I'm going to do this together with everyone. We'll just, we're looking at the S&P on the left is the S&P. This is the SPY. Most people can just grab the SPY. They don't always go to the S&P um, index, the S&P 500, SPX index. So I'm going to go to the SPY. 
which is the trading vehicle. It trades exactly the same. Uh, the SPY right now is up, is, is down 0.33, and the S&P is down 0.32. So they're close enough. So what I'm going to say to you is the pattern that I'm looking at right now suggests by the volatility of the MACD and the slow stochastic in sync. Now, this is something that, ooh, um, I'll have to go back to try to find it. I used to know exactly where I want to look at because I have a library in my mind of um, chart patterns that have formed over the years. It sometimes takes me a moment. I've got to scramble through and figure out where it was or what the symbol was. And Merck is the one that's telling me, but I'd have to go back a long time. So I'm going to just say, at this particular point, there's a wave pattern that I look at, and that says that if the price... Now, for those of you who are not used to the MACD, the moving average convergence divergence, look at the left side chart, and you see that this green line on the MACD, this, uh, this uh, upper technical tool right here, the green line, look at it, it kind of matches very well the pattern of the price being followed, in this case, the S&P. Look at the stochastic. The stochastic is doing exactly the same. Look at this inverted V, the lowercase h pattern, or inverted V, that, that went from the low of 259 back, uh, I think it was about October the 29th-ish, and then it ran up to the high that was made somewhere around the 7th of November and pulled back. Look at the stochastic. When I'm following a yo-yo sine wave pattern that mimics exactly, I'm not getting a sense, I'm getting a sense of coordination. I'm not getting a sense of leadership. What I mean by that is that when one of them is acting way better than the other, that's leadership. At this particular point, they just yo-yo, yo-yoing with the tide and the tide is down, and then there's this sudden flurry of waves, and then like the, the mid-term mid mid uh, tsunami that went skyrocketing up, and then it comes right back down, but it didn't come back down to test the low of 2585. It came back to a slightly higher low, which is around about 20, uh, 20, 263.35. So that is a bullish sign but now if you look at the 200 period moving average, it's just about, and this is what, so the nine, it's gone above the nine and the 14 period moving average in the SPY daily. <clears throat> it's up against exactly. Now I'm going to have to check on this because I did something over the weekend, uh, over last night it was, where I suddenly noticed that one of my 120 minute charts had a different 200 period exponential moving average to the other, and yet it's exponential. Everything's the same. I don't understand why it's giving me a different figure. But this 200 period moving average, I don't know if you've got one showing up right now on the SPY. Mine's at 274.64. And where did we stop yesterday? At 274.58. So that's really uh, pretty exact. So I'm going to say to you two things. One is the news that we've got coming over the weekend has been in the market for a while. And it's been saying that there's uncertainty. And I think even with the Fed, whatever the Fed has said right now, I, I'm still looking at this. The TLT is only up 52 cents. I think it's still uncertainty. China, I think it's still going to be uncertainty. I don't think this is all going to get resolved. And we slam to the upside. And by uh, New Year's Day, we're looking at the Dow um, somewhere in the 20. 5, 800, 25, 26,200 area. I just don't think it's time for that because a lot of stocks still need, at least if not price, they need time to, to consolidate and have further tests. And that's number one. Number two is in my earthquake and aftershock theory, we are seeing a series of aftershocks, but I don't think that after this kind of a sell off, that we won't get out of this without the VIX rallying really sharply. Now, the VIX at this particular, so I'm going to answer your question. I can answer it real quickly by saying I would wait. I wouldn't get ahead of anything, but I'd rather give you my, my, my overall thinking so that we can be on the same page so you know where I'm wrong, you know where I'm right, you know what to look for. So if you look at the VIX index, uh, Ben, you'll see that there's a large arch formation after the 2884 high on October the 11th. That, uh, that, that, so that's 2884. 
Then it runs up to just under 28, uh, late October, pulls back, gets to the 16s, 15, actually 15, uh, no, 16.09, makes another arch formation. And now this is what's going to be very important. <clears throat> people are still, people of importance are still buying um, uh, insurance through the VIX. Why do I say people of importance? Because it isn't you or I, it is a really big, big money is coming in. Otherwise, it would not be able to hold at this level. That's my, my assessment. And that's saying, <clears throat> if there is a sudden drop Sunday night into Monday, because everything looks fantastic, and the VIX starts to trade in the 15s, it's at 1925. To get to the 15s, three things have to happen. The market has to go really high, much, much, quite a bit higher. It has to hold for at least a day or two. And there has to be good news. So I'll be back. Can you yeah. hold on? I can. All right, I'll be back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance, David White's daily market letter, gives you trade recommendations based on David's proprietary power law vector indicator that put the odds of success overwhelmingly in your favor. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop price for each stock and option trade. David combines his years of trading experience along with his background in technology and computing to offer his subscribers his take on the markets on a daily basis. Every trading day by 9.30, David publishes his morning issue of the Path of Least Resistance, along with updates sent out throughout the week whenever there is new, actionable trading information. All new subscribers receive a 30-day, no-questions-asked, money-back guarantee. To sign up for David White's daily trading newsletter right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com, and you'll find the Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're going to take just a few more minutes uh, with Ben, and we're looking at uh, the spice. Uh, ben, you still there? Yeah. So, Basil, I guess the way I, I, I you know, a couple thoughts on this whole China thing and and um, just what comes out of the government in general, I, I'm looking at hard facts. So, you know, when, when, when the uh, when the president says, hey, I'm going to put tariffs on, and he actually does it, to me that's a hard fact, and it's a game changer in the market. But when we say, hey, we're going to strong-arm China, and we're going to prevent them from stealing our IP, I think there's just no way, absolutely no way in hell that's going to happen. Uh, you know, they can say all they want, but we're not going to change their behavior. 
So I'm just looking at pure hard facts that I think are believable. And I, you know, and one of the things I think as technical traders that that was uh, an absolute um, tornado that hit us is is all these QE injections. And it's like, how do you how do you trade that stuff? So my question to you is, I, you know, I saw another hard fact yesterday, which was interest rates. You know, when Powell made his statement, do you view that as almost like another QE injection, or do you feel like, you know what, the QE injections are done, and and how do you interpret maybe a delay in interest rate hikes? Is that Do you think that's a game changer in, in, in the market movement? So now what we've got to do is this. We've got to say to ourselves, you talk about facts. So the facts are that the data, the actual data that the Fed looks at, look, if the Fed looked at the right data, they would have seen inflation coming a long time. You tell me, is there anything that you buy other than the choice that you can make through the internet to get something a little cheaper, but is there anything that you can buy that is lower priced now than it was a year ago or lower priced a year ago than it was a year before that? Very little, right? Right. Okay, so the Fed looks at other data. That's number one. Number two is that the data that they're actually looking at right up until two days ago was exactly in line with what they said they were looking at to be able to feel comfortable about raising rates. So I don't see any change in, um, I think what I do see a change in the fact that he didn't give numbers for next year, but that, that didn't matter. Even if he gave numbers, they can always change. So my suspicion is, if I'm looking at rates right now, the TLT is up 47 cents, it less, it le higher, lower than it was five days ago, just under 116, and higher than it was a week and a half ago in the 114s. It's 114.92. I see nothing so far to suggest to me that rates are anything other than stuck in a range for right now. So let's just put that aside. So rates to me, I don't think that's an important issue, just as we're speaking, because all that Powell did, and that's the reason why I'm wondering if this wasn't like the midterm spike to the upside in the arch formation. And that's, so that's one thing I want to set aside. Number two is if the TLT starts to go to 116.50, 117, I would be surprised if the market isn't coming down at that point because it would suggest to me rates are coming down because the Fed is now very, they're kind of scared about what's going on. So I'm just looking at parameters. If the, if the, if the TLT, the Lehman 20-year Treasury bond at 140.90 by Tuesday of next week, the day I give my webinar at five o'clock, um, if the TLT is above 116, I'm gonna do a reassessment of a couple of things. If it is, if the TLT is actually under 113.75, that means something else. So that's the one thing. The SPY, let's just go to go back there because to tell you the truth, if you weren't in the SPY already with a lot of leeway to say, well, if they're wrong, I can always cover, I can even cover overnight and Sunday night or whatever it is. And if we're right and it keeps going higher, the high to me says that I want to see the SPY above 282, the high that was made on the 8th of November, or 281.22, if that if the spy starts to trade for three sessions above 282.50, closes above there for two out of three, I'm going to have to do an assessment and say, you know what, we could have had two nine to eleven point correction percent corrections. This is the second one. Now we're going to go up and be ready for another correction later on. But we might start to make a sideways consolidation with higher lows and higher highs. My thinking right now is that I don't think the worst is done, but I need to wait for the close on Monday. Why? Because that's the candle. Look at the candle. Look at that ugly candle of last month. That is really negative. Look at the MACD. Turned down. Look at the stochastic. Is at 80%. Hasn't gone under 80%. So that makes the next few sessions really important. So I'm saying to you, if you aren't in anything right now, now, oh, here's the other thing. If you're a longer-term position player, and you are looking for a place to put some money, in this 25,000 area in the Dow, in the 27 to 26, uh, 20, 270 in the SPY, 265 area, this could be a place where you start to park a little money for the longer term 
saying, you know what, if there's another 8% down, this is part of the plan, because I still think that somewhere next year, there's going to be a really strong bull market, and that goes into that, that what I call the final coda phase. So I still see higher prices, but here's my thinking. Rather than take a risk of a short term, whatever it is, in the area of between 273 to between 270 and 260, in this 10 point area, it's not a big deal in terms of percentages. If this is where you want to start another position in your long term outlook, then I'm going to say, knowing that there's a five to maybe an 8% potential decline afterwards if things go wrong, you at least tiptoed right. in, you're mm -hmm. in. And if there's a sudden spiral yeah. to the upside, we're looking at 285 by Wednesday of next week in the, in the SPY, you're at least in. So that's the way I'm looking Got at it. it. Now, short-term trading, let's talk about it tomorrow in Technical Friday. I just don't see any rush right now to be shorting. And yeah. on the short, long side, as you, for, for subscribers, and no, we used the dip this morning to actually take take a position to the upside. So we're preparing. Right. For I was some... just looking at the I was just looking at the spy on you know rubbing up against the nine EMA on the two on the uh, weekly and the monthly. But I mean, you 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 definitely thoroughly answered you know what I was looking for. So I appreciate it. Okay. And just remember that the MACD is still weak in the weekly chart, and in the stoch the stochastic is still weak in the weekly chart. That to me is important. Hey, thanks so much for calling, giving yeah, me the opportunity good. to go through yeah. that. Thank you. Thank you. That's Ben and Tallahassee. Now, let's just go back to a couple of questions I had. Um, would I just quickly go through the QQQs? Yes, the Qs, I can't believe this. We were actually in it on Monday morning, right at the opening, and we got stopped out just for a tiny little gain. I, 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 the reason why I made the stop a little tighter than I normally would is because there was still some uncertainty, and even that sudden pullback, that could have got I had a retest. And that's a big point I mean, you're in the three times long. That's a big pullback. So, yeah, it was a mistake. I apologize. Certainly picked the exact bottom, uh, just like with the Dow, we picked the exact top. But uh, And I'm having a timing. I'm having a, a webinar a week, two weeks from Friday, um, on the 14th of um, December. It is an all-day one. So it's Tuesday night. This coming Tuesday night is a webinar on what's next in the market, what sectors do I like. We're, we're starting to put positions on for positions that could work out coming into this next phase. Um, that's on the long side. On the short side, we'll do the same thing very soon. Um, and I'm doing a webinar, an all-day webinar. This is very unusual. I hardly ever do these. Did one last year this time. I'm still in touch with a couple of people, and they, they, they really love it. They've been using it all year. So it's, it's entries and exits, entries and exits. What are the techniques that we use? How do we do it? A whole day webinar. Check out the front page of TFNN. I'll be right back. Are Pass. you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of come commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. 
Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Hi, right, folks. So, yep, nice rally We're at 2741.25. This is another ABC, another peak D, big D in the two minute chart of the E mini. Okay, that's good. So, uh, just a couple of things. I need to do a little uh, housework. Um, well, let me get to this back here. So, in my, my opening call, I, I, I spent a chunk of work time last night on a bunch of things, and one of them. There were two charts specifically that I was talking about that were almost at all-time highs, and I said these are examples that I was going to use Tuesday night for my uh, for my uh, webinar for subscribers in what's next. Now these two stocks, I wanted to have one of them this morning, and the other one I thought it's acting well, but at that price in the 200 and something, uh, I didn't want to buy it right now because it was already in leg D. So that kind of fulfills everything that we're looking for. And I made a mistake in, the, in, in sending it off this morning. I completely forgot. I, I cut and pasted, and I put it in, and I put it under the wrong stock. So the actual, everything I wanted, I said to buy it this morning. It was trading yesterday and closed this particular stock. <laughs> this is the way it works sometimes. It closed at... Um, 92.80, I think. I said, let's buy it at 92.20. I'll have to have a dip. I want to see a leg D this morning. And, and then what I do, I actually put it together with the wrong stock. Now, I also had the chart already. And this, I never do this. I don't know what happened to me. I it, it, Just some things were going on. I was trying to maybe do two things at once. So I, I didn't even post the chart that I was talking about. I mentioned it in my paragraph, first paragraph. But I forgot to put the chart in. What a pity, because it did exactly that. It went right to the level that we wanted. It was almost the low of the day. And now instead of trading at 92.20, it's at 92.86. But we'll have it in tomorrow. It's still a great stock, even though it's going close to an all-time high. Those are the stocks that have held beautifully here. I want leadership. I don't want to mess around with the laggards. I, I want to mix leadership and stocks that are really have had their bear market and are ready for a decent bounce. So that's what we're looking for right here. So sorry about that. Subscribe. I'm not going to mention the name. I got a couple of emails, people saying, what was it? What was it? I said, this is what it was, and that's what it is, but there is no trade. It's got to be fair to everybody. I can't just select some people to have that information. And I was, in fact, I had the email all ready to resend uh, to, so it would be posted. And I thought, you know, some people aren't used to it. I don't ever send out a second, e uh, you know, once my emails, once my charts have gone out, they've gone out uh, in the new format I have. So it's a shame, but there'll be another opportunity. We'll we'll, we'll still get it probably. It'll be at a little higher price. Um, so okay, but the one that we did buy the other day at the almost of the low is uh, just fabulous. Uh, in at 64, it's at 70 right now. I like that. Okay, now let's get back to our story. And our story is that there's a question. TMO. Oh, TMO. No. Uh, who's that? No, this is the person. That, this is the, 
Oh man, where did it go? Oh, here we go. So I had a couple of questions, and one was keeps disappearing on me. Hello, get back. I've got all these different monitors. Oh, there we go. NBEV, radio show question. Hi, Basil. Can you take a look at today's action in NBEV? It will benefit from the farm bull passage. Can you see this making a run back to the fifth to the nine mark? Thanks, Hector. Okay, Hector, this is what I'm looking at you. Uh, you know, in the break, I mentioned a little bit of work on NBEV. I think I've done it once before. I just didn't find that. Okay. NBEV trading at $4.56, up 13 cents, up 3.02%. So low price stocks make a tiny move, big percentage, remember. Okay. This made in the monthly chart, New Age Bevcore trading at 4.54, up 11 cents. Went from the 1.25 area all the way to $10. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, no, $9.99 September. So $3.42, $3.40. So that is a huge decline. Okay, so 60% decline ish. 50, yeah, 60%. So the question is yep, that farm bull, I, I haven't, I don't know much about it. I've just heard a little bit about it. But I'm going to suggest to you, because you're following it closely, it's at $4.55. Why don't you saw this is a leg, a leg B, a new leg B right now, gray leg B, because it's way under the previous high that was at about 5.30. So I'm going to say to you, you're following this. Start, if you have no position now, start your position. Let's give it the entire day because now people know about the bull and then suddenly word will filter out that maybe New Age Bev is going to, I don't know what it does, but they're going to benefit from it. Let me do this. Uh, oh, oh, it must be in the cannabis area because of the, the way this chart pattern looks. It looks like one of those cannabis stocks. Okay. Give me, um, I'm going to say start your position here at $4.55 because you're following it and it's making a little chance of a, a cup formation with the head and shoulders inverse bottom making 337 a really important level to hold. I wouldn't even give it 337. I'd just say to you, if it's 455, by tomorrow, if it goes under $4.42, so that's 13 cents, that's already 3%. But that's okay, if it's a small position, you, this is your beginning position for something bigger. So I think there's a chance for a cup formation. And I, I will be talking about this area in my webinar on Tuesday night, because we're looking at areas for the coming many months. What could work and where would you be able to buy certain stocks or ETFs or ETNs or whatever they are? So, Hector, I'm going to say start your position right here at 458. Uh, it's already jumping because somebody heard us talking. 458. And the 120-minute chart, if I remember this correctly, yes, the 120-minute chart has four, somewhere around 420 as key support. I I don't know if I want to give it even that much on the very short-term basis, but if it's a small position, I'm not, going to, I'm not going to tell you how much you want to give as a percentage risk. I'm just going to say, for me, 20, 20 cents would be max because I'll tell you why. If it does go down 20 cents, I think it's going to go sideways for another couple of days. It needs to hold right here. It needs to hold the 452, 448 level. There you are. Now you've got it. And then I'll look at it again tomorrow. I'll have to make a note about it in BEV. Let me write that down in the EV, Hector. I can read that, um, and I'll come back to it. Uh, I'll come back to it tomorrow. See how it's, how I'm doing today. So start a position, and if this starts to trade in the five dollars and thirty-five to five fifty area over the next week, it's on its way. That's the best thing that I can say because you want that cup formation. You want the MACD as as it is turning up right now. You want the CCI to be rallying like it is as the commodity channel index. You want to see the unbalanced volume rallying. You want to see the stochastic rallying. They're all doing that. They will fail if this thing drops about 23 cents in the next two days. So far, so good. So enter it, and then you can always add to it, but I'll try to get to it again tomorrow or Monday. We'll look at it again. Nice stock to look at. Uh, what is the volume? I don't know. I didn't even check. The volume is 19, 14 million. Oh, this has got plenty of volume. Volume is not an issue. I was just a little afraid that if it pulls back, you can't get out in time. That's what happens with very low volume stocks, low price, low volume stocks. Good. Next question I had was, um, wow. 
break. Just one more section to go. I haven't finished gold and everything. Ay, ay, ay. Um, hi, Basil. I think you have a typo in the entry and stock price. Yep, yep, yep. The news. Great job on the newsletter. I've listened to you for a while. Just started with the newsletter. Yeah, thank you. I'll be right I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge heard here at TFNN.com. Uh, hi, folks. We're back. So uh, let me just finish these things here. Gold. Gold is up a dollar, dollar fifty. Yesterday's move up in gold. I, you know, together with yesterday's move up in gold, which was quite quite big, but it was still only within the trading band, and the euro stuck in this H pattern at the bottom. Uh, together with uh, the dollar, let me see where the dollar is, our dollar, because we are along the dollar still, um, holding zero, 96.84 in the dollar index. It should be down at 96.30. It could still do that, but so far it's not. It looks like it really wants to make a leg D in the weekly at 97.70. So this is, to me, something's wrong with this scenario. So I'm just going to go through this real quickly. You've got um, gold. It, Bonds should have been much, much higher. Yields should have been much lower if the Fed was going to make a big change. The dollar should be much lower and not where it is right now. Gold should have been, I don't actually see anything for gold, I must say, but gold should have been higher at this point. So I don't, I don't believe Powell, that's all. All I can say is I don't, I don't believe that Powell was saying everything is just hunky-dory. He was just saying things are within the parameters we're looking at. And the TNX uh, is lower, but it's not that much lower. Yeah. Um, okay, now let's do a couple of things here. So I did that, did that. Crude oil, 
Crude oil is saying to us, if they together with Wood W O D, this is the uh, this is the uh, international, this is the timber and forestry ETF, and 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 high grade copper. Together with crude oil, this is saying there is a slowdown out there. No matter what you think, there's a slowdown. When does the Fed see it? And the Fed always sees these things too late. I suspect in late January, maybe February. In fact, when the Fed says, I think we're in for a, a kind of a recession, we're on our way. That's the next big move up in the market. That's usually the way it works. Haven't seen that for a while. All right, quick couple of questions. Goldman Sachs. Now, why is Goldman Sachs so poor? Look at this. Lousy, lousy action. Not a good sign. Why is Home Depot, where if the yields are coming down and home builders should be soaring because of that, um, Home Depot is down 175 so 45 point, 40 points off its all-time high, 40 points, 20 percent. Something's wrong with this picture. I'll be back with Tom later on. Have a great rest of the day. Stay tuned for, for um, you got Steve coming up. you got Dave coming up, and I'll be back with Tom a little later on. Check out my opening call. Check out my webinar coming up this Tuesday night. What's next for the market? And then my all-day webinar, Friday to Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading in larry's first week alone he sent out 25 charts six videos and a full report to his subscribers in just one week if you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade then larry's service fibonacci 24 7 is something that you must try right now new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee with nothing to risk sign up now to larry pesavento's fibonacci 24 7 by visiting the front page of tfnn.com under trading newsletters